was the institutional arrangements that were needed to serve its independence. We should tremble at the prospect of congressional inquisition of judges. I think that's a fundamental misreading of the Constitution. The Constitution provided for a balance of power. Uh, the Federalist Papers, Alexander Hamilton writes, the judicial branch will never tackle the executive and legislative branches because it's the weakest of the three branches. Jefferson abolished, uh, and we have to assume since Madison was his Secretary of State, that Jefferson had some knowledge of the Constitution. Uh, Jefferson abolishes 18 out of 35 federal judges, just wipes them out, so go home, no more, no more salary, no more court, goodbye. Uh, Jefferson, when asked about judicial supremacy, writes back, uh, that is an absurdity, it would be an oligarchy. Uh, Lincoln says of the idea that nine people can make law, that would eliminate freedom for the rest of us. And he repudiates the idea that the Dred Scott decision by the Supreme Court is the law of the land. He says, no, it's the law of the case. Mm -hmm. But the, con the court does not have the power to create the law of the land. Uh, part of his first inaugural is dedicated to telling the, the Supreme Court where to get off. So we've gotten into this cycle starting in 1958 with the Warren Court. The, the lawyer class loves the idea that they are the center of the universe. Uh, the law schools love the idea that they get to define the Constitution. It's simply untrue. The budget. <clears throat> Earlier this week, President Obama released his budget for 2013. Uh, the Wall Street Journal noted that after four years of spending more than 24% 24, 24 of GDP every year, and that's the highest spending rate since 1946, as we were coming out of the Second World War. After four years of 24% of GDP every year, President Obama now predicts that under this new budget, we will spend 24.3% of GDP. What does President Gingrich do to get us back to the historical norm of 18 to 20% of GDP? Well, first you pass a uh, law replacing the 130-year-old civil service system with a brand new modern management system, which uh, experts uh, estimate would save us $500 billion a year. Second, you bring in the American Express Visa and MasterCard model of anti-fraud effort, which experts believe would save you between 60 and $110 billion a year on Medicaid and Medicare fraud, not counting food stamp fraud, st student loan fraud, and other kinds of fraud. Uh, third, you abolish a number of departments, starting with the Department of Energy. I'm for actually having energy rather than having a bureaucracy of energy. And we've, had, we've tried this experiment of whether or not bureaucrats in Washington create energy. They don't. They set up things like Solyndra. They increase corruption. They increase scandalous behavior. They waste money. Uh, they actually slow down the development of new technology. So I think we'd be better off to, to look, go through selectively eliminating some departments and some other activities. Uh, I think we also should uh, fundamentally overhaul uh, the way the federal government runs uh, the Pentagon. And we should rethink from the ground up foreign aid. I mean, foreign aid has for a half century sickened countries, increased the power of bureaucracies, increased the level of government corruption. Uh, we ought to fundamentally re-examine what are we trying to accomplish and is government really the best way to accomplish it? So there are a number of steps we could take. Uh, I helped author the only four balanced budgets in your lifetime. We paid off $405 billion in federal debt. But there were two keys to it. One is to get unemployment back down to 4%. It was at 4.2% when I left office. Uh, the other is uh, to dramatically expand American energy. Remember, every time you produce more oil and gas offshore or more oil and gas off, the f off of federal land, you are increasing revenue to the federal government. Mm. So you can have a substantial increase in revenue without a tax increase. Now, so one of the fundamental impulses of what you're saying here is there is in Washington a calcified, enormous structure, establishment. The federal government is part bureaucracy, part the lobbying and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, bureaucratic, the political establishment, and you intend to take to that a sledgehammer, right? Well, or the votes of the American people, which may feel like okay, a sledgehammer. Now, okay, so now you, get, now you get to what I now address you, not as a candidate, but as a historian. Milton Friedman noted, James Buchanan, Nobel Prize winning economist with his public work uh, theory, noted this fundamental problem in our institutional arrangements. You could also, you could call it a small c constitutional problem. Whereas federal costs are dispersed across all of us, the benefits of federal spending accrue to small groups, which therefore have permanent incentives to organize and manipulate the, the political system to increase spending further and further and further. So we see this taking off with the New Deal. It gets, it becomes more uh, entrenched as a result of the Great Society. 
that's an institutional, small c, so to speak, constitutional problem. What do you do with it? To f can you fix that permanently? You ha can have a, come into office in a huge wave of popular support for doing something, as Ronald Reagan did in 1980. And even well, at that, domestic spending only slowed. Well, there, there are only two times we actually cut domestic discretionary spending. 1981 under Reagan, I voted for it, and 1995 under me as Speaker. So we have done it twice uh, since World War II. But look, first of all, you have to offer a better future. So I want to attach a training component to unemployment compensation so no one ever gets, and ever again gets money for doing nothing. They have to sign up for a business training program, increase their human capital if they're going to get unemployment compensation. Uh, I want to offer people paychecks rather than food stamps. And, and let's have a fight. I mean, somebody who says absolutely flatly they want to be dependent, they're not part of our majority. But I don't think there are very many people who, given a choice between a paycheck and food stamps, are going to pick food stamps. And so I think we have to go through and really offer a dramatic future. When you say paycheck, better. you mean a uh, job? Milton Friedman's, oh, I see. Okay. I thought you were talking about a negative income no, tax. No, thing no, no. I'm talking about, talking about an old fashioned idea. They actually go to work. <laughs> they actually, they actually. You need to earn. slap me. I'm yeah. not with you yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. They need to earn the paycheck. Got it. Got it. Health care. You've said you want to repeal and replace Obamacare. Both strike me as pretty tall orders. Repeal it how? Well, you repeal it by making it a major condition of the fall campaign, and 